Welcome to the main podcast, the only podcast that starts with Welcome to the main podcast. Every week we take you behind the memes and into the minds of the creators of the memes you love. Tonight, the main hype man, Josh Tice, has been promoted to co-host. Hey, uh, I'm going to just call you Skylar right now. Uh, you've been playing these peppers only, my fine feathered friend. Just pretend, well, just pretend you're Skylar. I cleaned up my face. I got my car running now. I haven't wrecked in a week. I haven't Looking wrecked in a week. Looking up. How many zip ties are holding your car together, approximately? Uh, I don't need them anymore. I've successfully made it to duct tape. We're good. So Josh was making fun of me for being a uh, bit of a handyman myself. Uh, what was that? This old house? Yeah. And Where that was based off of the... Hot shower water for like two weeks it was only a week it was at least a week yeah it was it was almost a full week i had no hot water and uh that's the second time i've replaced a hot water heater in a year so i'm um, i'm getting better last time i was without water for six months <laughs> oh, i have a friend who does hvac i am very not handy uh but i did put in a storm door all by myself Ooh. Ooh. thank you and then again with us tonight, someone who is much more handy than myself, uh, Chance Couchlock. Uh, <laughs> he does not have his uh, handy sidekick, Eugene, with him today. Are you feeling adrift without Eugene? Oh, no. I mean, Eugene and I, we just had brunch yesterday, as you know. We had the uh, main Bougie Foodies barbecue brunch. He came up to Anoka, drove about 30 minutes from his house to come up and have barbecue brunch. And... Uh, little Christmas get together, bought him a bottle of hot sauce from Jelly Bean and Julia's, my buddy's restaurant that we went to. So it was good. We connected and no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine out on my own here today. I couldn't quite tell in the pictures. What were you eating for barbecue? So I actually had their biscuits and gravy, which it's like the best biscuits and gravy I've ever had. That's, that's like one of my go-tos there. Eugene got the ribs and waffles, so, I mean, can't really go wrong with ribs and waffles either. Well, that was the perfect segue, because really all I'm trying to get to is bitching about my birthday dinner last night. Uh, <laughs> I, I went to order barbecue from a place down the street called Salvage Barbecue, and I, I lived in Texas for a while, so I'm spoiled on barbecue. I love brisket, uh, and so the plan was to get a pound of brisket, a whole chicken, and some ribs for everybody to split, you know, not having a huge party, but enough food that there'd be leftovers, you know, I haven't had barbecue in a while. All they had left was ribs. And I swear to God, they were the worst ribs I've ever had. And I spent like fucking 70. I bought two full racks of garbage ribs. It was like $70 later. So I, I'm thinking about write, writing a very strongly worded uh, Google review here after this podcast episode. Well, did, did you have some uh, pretty bad whiskey too there? Oh, oh, yeah. But I'm not drinking that right now. Uh, so I had peanut butter whiskey. My oh, friend God. Yeah, my friend thought that I was insinuating heavily that I wanted this peanut butter whiskey because I was talking about it, and so he bought it as my birthday present. Oh, and no. it's, awful. it's awful. I don't know why people it's like not shit. bad in doses. If you take a shot of it every now and again, not a big deal. But it's not I'm... it's not the worst thing I've ever had in my life. And at one point, I was a little drunk and I was mixing it with a ginger beer. So there were some poor decisions made last night. <laughs> <laughs> But you only turn 36 once. Well, happy birthday yesterday. Yes, thank you. At uh, whatever time your time zone is, right? Yeah, yeah. De definitely Central Standard Time only. Happy birthdays. By December 16th, there should be a copy of Business as Usual arriving at your house that I ordered you off eBay for your birthday present. Oh, thanks, buddy. I had a feeling with the uh, heavy hints you were laying with the uh, record and uh, Simon Says pointing to it with the mop head. Yes. That uh, an album was on its way. Uh, I would also take Fire Ants, though. Well, I mean, I, I can't guarantee that, and I don't know about, you know, I mean, like, I don't know where the post office is. I'm historically <laughs> bad at getting to the post office, so I was able to just buy that off eBay and send it over to you, just have it shipped to you. So. There are a lot of people who will ship Fire Ants for you. And then we have another, uh, we actually have a first-time guest with us tonight, Stephen, or Dave's Not Here, man. Uh, bringing a Canadian perspective to the show this week. Uh, how much snow is on the ground right now, buddy? Actually, we just got a fresh dump this morning. So I don't know, which is, it's kind of rare for the island, but I got a couple inches, two or three inches. So. And you yeah, measure inches there. Are you doing that for us? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I usually do inches just because it's easy for me. 
I don't know. It's just universal. So my height's an inch. It's, I don't know. It just makes it easier for me. Like even in construction, it makes it easier for me to break down you know, mentally. I don't know. Fucking throw too many millimeters at me. I'm like, how fucking many millimeters is 230 millimeters? Like, go away. Go away. Fucking... <laughs> yes. If I'm get out of here with that. If shit. I'm doing like small, if I'm doing small increments, yeah, fucking centimeters, millimeters are nice. But other than that, fuck. What are your feelings on uh, ketchup chips? You know what? <laughs> Actually, I don't mind ketchup chips. I hate ketchup though. So fuck, go figure. <laughs> what about extra ketchup chips? Have you encountered these things? There's extra. They're a little. <laughs> I have not. It, it's basically like a bag of seasoning with a few potato <laughs> chips. There's also that sounds about right. Yeah. There's also extra all dressed, which are the same deal, but with every seasoning in the world. Oh yeah, I know. All dressed is fucking sweet. And then you go extra, and it's like you know you remember back in like I mean you don't remember this personally, but we used to have conquests for spices. And if they could only see what we're doing with spices now. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, we have another, I mean, we've got a smorgasbord of new guests with us tonight. Um, another first time guest is Dustin. And uh, Dustin, Dustin is actually another Mainer. He lives just about an hour north of me. I'm thinking in the future, we're going to work on our Casey Paul or Chance Eugene dynamic. Um, you know, we can become like, you know, we got to have that little dynamic. These guys all have their little sidekick gigs. And uh, hey, we need something, man. Have any feelings on adventures? Would you like to go on any adventures with me? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, this summer you were talking about camping and that never happened. You said you had a place that you knew of. The truth comes out. Oh. <laughs> actually my bad. There was some uh, unfortunate circumstances surrounding that, um, but we'll – We'll have to put it back on the docket. Uh, we had another main memer that I, I haven't met, Sean, uh, and we'll probably yeah. have him on a future episode because no one is safe from the podcast. Eventually, I will talk to every one of you, or you have to quit memeing before I get to you, but I win <laughs> in that respect. So uh, before we move on to our special guest, we talked about a counterfeit McRib last e episode, uh, and I've got the man here, Steven. <laughs> Oh, shit. Tell me about your counterfeit McRib sandwich. Yeah, uh, fuck. I don't know. I just kind of found it and figured, yeah, that was... I'm like, what the fuck's this McRub? I got to check this out, you know? like, <laughs> Got to ask Eugene about this. He, he didn't know fucking shit about a McRub. He couldn't authenticize that at all. So. It actually called but, it McRub. <laughs> we talked about it in last episode. It hasn't even aired yet. Oh, yeah. Um, so there's going to be a more in-depth look at the uh, McRib sandwich, uh, but I, you know, I figured where I got you on here, there was a lot of grease in that box. But that's <laughs> yeah, I kind of uh, maybe mash a couple of, of uh, dinners together there, and uh, it's actually a hot hot wing box. I was like, <laughs> that explains the quantity of grease. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I need some grease on this sandwich. I better fucking dip her in there. See, well, I don't think that was anything to do with a McRib. I do feel like that was an authentic McRub for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I barely scrape together guests for these episodes. But because we have a guest on from across the pond, we did it at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Monday. And apparently that's the time when all memers are free. So if you ever <laughs> wonder like, when you could get a hold of a memer, it's 3 p.m. on a Monday. I've never been able to get so many guests together. So our special guest tonight is Deke, and he is host of the page Punk Rock Stepdad. Deke, how are you doing today? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good. Cheers. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, we were we were talking about uh, your distinctive style. You because you kind of fit into the main like aesthetic. You do shit posting, man. But you, uh, I noticed today as I was looking through some of your stuff, you do like a lot of book cover edits. Uh, yeah, and a large yeah. quantity of them I was I was really enjoying were shitty dick books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting yeah. for another cookbook announcement. <laughs> and uh, is that is that based off of Philip K. Dick? Yeah, yeah. The initial I think the first one, if you if you go on my Instagram profile and you look at um, the highlights of the, of the top of the profile, I've done like a complete works of shitty dick and so it'll just take you through every single one of them. <laughs> 
the very first one that I did was a sci-fi one, and I was just sort of thinking of a name, and it was, yeah, totally Philip K. Dick. It amused me. It amused a lot of other people, so I was just like, right, that's it. Every single book cover that I do, it's it's shitty dick. And, yeah, that's <laughs> that's how that came about. Now, are you a big sci-fi fan? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I enjoy sci-fi. Um, I mean, I haven't read that many Philip K. Dick books, but, you know, I've read a few. Now, he's a, he's a fascinating author. Um, he was actually diagnosed with uh, paranoid schizophrenia. He was the inspiration behind uh, his book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, was the inspiration behind the movie Blade Runner. The style that he conveyed was usually of a dystopian future, uh, and there was a lot of paranoid elements to it. You know, police states, deep states, you know, all these things that, that are becoming very common belief systems in, in the age of disinformation that we live in. And I feel uh. that it's a very fitting fit, <laughs> I feel that it's a very fitting theme uh, based on looking at some of your works. You kind of follow that same style. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Grew up. I don't know. Yeah. Just watching those sort of dystopian sci-fi things. Also a big fan of sort of zombie apocalypse genre as well. Not that I've memed that too much. But yeah, you know, just that, that general sort of dystopian future vibe. I dig it. Who's got sirens? I, I, Me, I coming I for someone. That's not, uh, that's not here. <laughs> Sitting here breaking the law. And on your page, uh, you know, you've just, you've cultivated this very distinct style. I really like what you've done. Everything is very crisp edits are on point and and it seems you you've you've really got this message that you're conveying do you would you be willing to talk a little bit about what you're going for with your page and the style about like capitalism and classism and and what are you what are you driving at with your overall theme i mean yeah those are both both things that concern me it's a it's a bit of a difficult one because i'm a meme page you know i'm i'm not trying to not trying to raise awareness particularly or, or change the world. I'm, I'm trying to make people with similar views sort of see it and, and be like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> That's actually cool to hear because in the meme community in general, you know, as content creators, we see a lot of like political bait posting in certain groups and stuff. And it's a, like a lot of times it's like people make content just to, gain a reaction right just kind of trolling so that's what i like about your page right like you're making stuff that's more like in the line of like eugene's group um his political group corn pops meme school you know so you have like like-minded individuals enjoying the content more so rather than like arguments going on in the comment threads and whatnot so yeah that's yeah, why that's like about browsing your page as opposed to like some of the OC meme groups. Yeah, that's that's definitely what I was going for. I mean, I've had occasions when I've had people in the comments try and argue. I, I tend to just like sort of turn notifications off and uh, let them get on with it, really. Yeah, fuck those guys. Um, yeah, totally. There, there was one guy in particular that got so angry that I wouldn't respond to him that he actually PM'd me and was like, why won't you argue with me? And uh, I just blocked him. <laughs> just like, you know, it's not someone that doesn't follow me. So, it's, yeah, it's just, just like, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. If you don't agree with me, then, you know, cool. Probably one of the parts of internet culture that I've just never really got on with was that, like, I've got to argue with strangers thing. Like, that's just boring. Um <laughs> You know, I'm like a lot of people get enjoyment from that and, you know, fair play to you. But, yeah, it's not me. Well, and, and I appreciate your style. You know, you're you're driving at a point, and it is. It's designed for like-minded individuals. You aren't trying to convert people. When people see your messages, you know, they're like, fuck yeah, man, or they're like, fuck this guy. You're not – you're you're either – you're on your side or you're on the other. That's basically it. And you're just having a good time. You're making good edits. They, they are poignant memes. I think that, you know, part of my draw of bringing you on here is, you know, you have this very distinctive style and, and it's almost like a brand for yourself, but you're not trying to promote yourself. You're promoting a message. If you're just spreading awareness, if you're just keeping people feeling united, that's a cool thing. 
in researching uh, this episode, I even found your memes on iFunny, which means you have a little bit of notoriety. Uh, There wasn't even the stamp on it. You know, sometimes you see the iFunny meme and there's like that, they stamp their own shit on it, but yours is distinctive and they didn't even do that to you. So I was like, okay, they even have respect for this guy. iFunny ain't slapping their watermark on there. Now that actually brings me to my next topic. Um, on your on your memes, uh, you had a lot of stickers. You've used um, it looks like packaging from you know old records and old books where it has like the yellow and it's kind of faded. And you've put either your watermark or an ex- additional part of the joke is on the uh, the price sticker. Um, and that's kind of a very unique stylization. Do you do you do that on almost all your memes? That, uh, I got that from Teenage Stepdad. I don't know whether he's the first one that did it. I've seen like quite a few memers doing it. But that's, I mean, if you scroll back through my stuff, anything that I did sort of prior to watching his Seize the Memes thing, I, I didn't do that. That was one of the things that I sort of picked up from from watching that. I, I, I did watermarks prior to that, but... Yeah, no, the, the stickers thing is, I don't know, within the last six months, maybe, no, longer than that. But, yeah, that, that's where I got that from. I've, I've seen other members do it. I think he's the one that first did it. But it, it's just a handy thing if you're trying to make something look like packaging to have, like, these things on it. It takes on more of a, a you know, it, it, it unifies the image and makes it look like a physical thing rather than just, you know, a yes. picture with words on it, um, which is, you know, what, what means are. I can see some of the influence uh, from Teenage Stepdad in your work. Um, you know, Teenage Stepdad is a lot of book covers. And like you said, they, the sticker style definitely uh, got a big jump from how that artist used it. And and the watermarking is a, is a frequent topic here on the show. And, and uh, out of anybody in the main gang, Eugene, who couldn't make it here today, was on the last episode uh, was very familiar with your work. He's been following you for a while. And that was one of his questions was, uh, you know, uh, do you find watermarking to be an important part of it? Um, you know, do people, you ever see people wipe your watermark off and try to pass it off as their own? Sort of that sort of realm of questioning. Um, yeah, so I, I never used to, when I started, I wasn't doing watermarks. And like prior to, Prior to setting the page up, any sort of memes that I do for, like, you know, local groups, stuff like that, I never watermarked them at all. Uh, the reason that I started, there was there was one particular guy on my friends list. He followed the page, and he used to repost the content but not share it. He doesn't just do it to my page. He's just one of those guys, like a, like a sort of meme curator, He's just constantly reposts yeah. stuff without yeah. ever claiming yeah. where it's from. Oh, you said the magic word! Uh, <laughs> Which you know a bit about meme curation, curation here in the main group. Right, uh, and right, I'm, right. I'm assuming you picked up on some of that. <laughs> but yeah, so that was that was the initial thing. I was like, I was like, okay, this was you know when I was trying to sort of grow my audience and that. I was like, well. If this one guy's doing it, there's obviously other people that are doing it, and like my stuff's out there, it's circulating. No one's got like a, they can't tell where it's come from, without like some sort of. So that was that was why I put them on there, and then yeah, as it's gone on, I've tried to, I don't know, get clever with it, you know, like sort of stick them onto stickers, whatever. Yeah, exactly, and I mean, I, I'm in the same you know game, but I I just. I don't know. I'm, I'm impressed with your reach. You have, you know, a good following. I noticed it's similar to myself, uh, but on a smaller scale is I have less followers on Instagram as versus Facebook. So I'm assuming you really got your start on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the Facebook page was first. Um, the Instagram account was initially sort of, it wasn't the punk rock stepped out account. It was just me just posting whatever on there, which was sort of predominantly punk rock stepdad stuff but it didn't it wasn't until later that i joined the two and sort of you know made an effort to to take it to instagram so yeah my instagram followings i think like maybe a quarter of or a fifth of what my facebook following is it's it's getting there slowly it's getting up there on the actual name punk rock stepdad is there any i i, I see 
a little bit of punk rock in you, but what about the stepdad portion? Are you a stepdad? I, I am a real, genuine, real life stepdad. Yes. Um, yeah. Like. Just oh, okay. The, so you're you're a true punk rock stepdad. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. The punk rock. I mean, I, I wouldn't specifically refer to myself as a punk rocker. Um, again, that sort of goes back to the. Beginning I don't know, of though. I, if I can interject. It's like yeah, your style is very punk rock, though. You're very anti-establishment, so yeah. I'd say you're pretty pretty punk rock in style. You might well, not have yeah. the green mohawk, but I think you're pretty punk rock. <laughs> I, I did in my youth. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was initially the page was sort of. I thought I'm gonna. I'm going to poke fun at older punks who have gone more conservative, like John Lydon, Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols, some sort of British politicians who claimed that they were punk when they were younger. So that was the initial thing. It, it, it evolved from there. And, you know, I just sort of, you know, poke fun at all sorts of different stuff now, whatever sort of takes my fancy. But, yeah, initially it was sort of punk rock content. How did you find your way? It seems like you've been doing this for a while. How long have you been doing this meme meme thing? Uh, probably about four years. I think the Punk Rock Stepped Out account is two years old. Prior to that was just sort of in uh, local shit posting groups, which which led to... Perfect. Um, so you started out as the shit poster. I, I had a feeling yeah. about you. You're, you're a shit poster <laughs> at heart. <laughs> Yeah, no. And how did you find your way into the main universe? That came up as uh, uh, so as the as the punk rock stepped up page. Uh, Facebook suggested that I join groups and give me like a sort of list of groups that that I might that I might like. Uh, there was a lot of them were fucking terrible as well. Uh, I think the the three that I joined uh, was main mashups. Oops All OC nice. Premium, I think. I have heard on your previous podcast that there are many different variations of it. Uh, and OC Void Posting, that was the three out of this like sort of huge list that Facebook gave me of of groups that I took a look at and was like, yeah, I quite like that. I, qu I quite like what's going on here. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you found your way into our, our little meme world. This is what we do. We get together and we shoot the shit. You know, you've got a shit posting foundation. Let's go. Let's go round robin here. We haven't done any sort of icebreaker or anything today, and we got a lot of guests on. So, the orb has not stopped. I want to. I want to talk about the orb for a little bit because even even punk rock stepdad should have never smoked that shit, and now he's in a pondering the orb meme. Are you guys still pondering, or or have you reached enlightenment, Josh? He's got his orb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have not pondered in at least a day. Oh, you, you, you've had a pond hiatus? That's a baseball. That's yeah, it's, it's, That's a, it's, a, it's, a scoosh, it's a scoosh ball. <laughs> Covered boosters kicking my ass. Let's put it that way. Oh, that's right. You poor boy. So yeah. I haven't pondered. Um, I, like... Last week was my last real week of work for the season. And so today, this Monday, I'm not at work because it's six degrees Fahrenheit and freezing cold out. And it's like my first week of winter layoff because I do construction and we don't do excavation in the wintertime. So, so you're going to be a regular guest on the podcast is what you're saying. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. My, For us uh, Canadian my and uh, UK up. people, how cold is that? What's that? For us Canadian you. UK people, how cold is that really? Dude, you just used <laughs> inches, and now you want me to convert to Celsius? <laughs> what the hell? Like, you're just all over the. I'm inches, all over the place. You know? I mean, oh yeah. Thirty-two Fahrenheit is zero Celsius. Uh, yeah. So take it so from there. Six, 40, minus know, forty is minus forty, but that's fucking weird, right? Hold on, I'm Googling Kelvin now. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's freezing cold out. It's cold. But, I got you. Yeah, well, so and now my winter break has started. 
So I've got plenty of time to ponder orbs all week. You know, <laughs> so it's going to be awesome. My wife works from home. Kids are at school. And it's just awesome winter break time. There'll be plenty of ponderings coming up. Steven, how many hectares is it to the post office from your house? Um, <laughs> let me think here. Hmm. Hectare. Not sure. Is this with or without hectares by, by volume? So you work in hectares as well. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I can tell you how many trees go in a hectare, but I can't tell you how many <laughs> how many kilometers it is. It would have been great if you just busted out a number right there. Just yeah, the <laughs> well, it's head. about you know four. <laughs> Honestly, you could say any number. We'd probably believe it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, probably that's that's right. right. I'm not checking the math. Steph, and it's negative 14.444 <laughs> infinity degrees Celsius. Four, minus 14? Yeah. See, he's just making up stuff, too. It yeah. works. <laughs> Steven and Chance are both in construction, then, I take it. Uh, no. Yes, but no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, it's like a side job for me. I'm a Are tree you a planter, logger, by, by trade. Yeah. Tree planter. Is that similar to an arborist? No, I I just do little little baby trees. Oh, do arborists do full grown trees? Yeah, well, they like trim. They trim up trees mostly. I think. Uh, they maybe they may plant large trees as well, but I'm not sure. So I've you give done. you give birth to arborists? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my penis. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you were you were asking if uh, clothing was optional, but you're the only one here without video, so that makes me wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I actually wore a T-shirt in honor of our guest. It's um, it's a WWF T-shirt, but it's that classic panda holding up the chair. Oh yeah, hitting hitting the other one, you know, from the old yeah. uh, lawsuit and the whatever that was, the nineties. Yeah, yeah you yeah. Donald Duck in it right yeah. now, or Donald? Yeah, totally Donald Duck in it for sure, though. Yeah, no, no pants. <laughs> Got a curly penis going on everything. Oh, you've been drawing some ducks. <laughs> I've been drawing some ducks. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Did you see my co-host here? Uh, sorry, Josh, you're demoted. Oh. I thought that would be the whole time. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is actually no. I've been talking right here. This one, I've been talking. Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah, I was send your Mallory. Uh, Deese, Deese actually sent me this from Texas when he was in Texas, but now no longer. Where is Deese these days? Where in the Montana. world? Montana. He's on Montana. Wow. This duck mountain shit. He gets around. Oh, Stefan. Stefan, your Steven. Christmas card showed up on Friday. Thank you so much. I got your Christmas card yeah, in the man. mail. It's wonderful. Sweet. Anybody, did anybody else here get one? No, just you, eh? You're the just only me. one. Wow. Yeah. I guess I was the only one northernly enough. I sent a couple to Florida, even. One to Georgia. Uh, one one make, made it all the way to Maine, actually. Uh, April got one. There you go. Yeah. She's pretty north. Uh, Dustin's pretty north, too. He's more north than me, so I think that's suitable. He's practically I'm in central. Canada. I'm central Maine. Yeah, that's that's more north than me. That's pretty good. You're pretty much Is at it? the line from Canada. Yeah, no, I'm about a four-hour drive from there, but okay. <laughs> no, you are not. I'm from the border. It's four hours from me. You've got to cut off I've, some time. You drive, I've you drive from me. here to Presque Isle. It's a four-hour drive. <laughs> oh, no, I don't go through Presque Isle. No, you got to go east. Oh, oh, you're talking that way over to Nova Scotia. Where I was born is right on the border with Canada, and um, it's a border crossing town, and it's yep. four hours from the big city of Portland, Maine. So, uh, where are you located? Are you right near like Lewis and Auburn area? Yeah, I'm right in Waterville. Oh, Waterville, yeah. So you, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you could get, you could get to St. Stephen, New Brunswick, in like three hours if you really just put a move on. Take Route Nine, you'll be there. Oh yeah. 100 miles an hour, booking it down the highway. <laughs> That's how it's done. Route 9? Okay, so when I was like, okay, when I was like uh, 18 It's a real main years, podcast now. Yeah, it is. It's the main podcast. <laughs> when I was 18 years old, I had rented an apartment in the big city, which our biggest city in Maine is 65,000 people. And the entire state only has one area code. Sorry, Canada and UK. I don't know what you use. Uh, letters and numbers that combine. <laughs> 
So I, I rented this apartment in Portland and I had like no money to my name. I'm a broke down East Mainer. Like there, that is a poor area. I'm coming back. I borrowed my ma's car. It was like a 93 Toyota Camry. And when you're 18 and your brain hasn't quite developed, you drive excessively fast. And so I'm doing like 115 on the way back on this back road, which I, I referred to as Route 9. They call it the airline. Yeah. And I was cresting a hill and I was braking when a cop saw me. So I'm doing 100 and a 55. <laughs> And that's criminal speeding. And, you know, you can get your ass in jail for that. But he's like, he pulls me over and he reduces it below criminal. And it's like, you know, a $300 ticket. Wow. And I'm like, shit, for a broke ass kid who just got his first apartment, that was all the money I had remaining. <laughs> but I can't tell my mom that. So I just like, just don't say shit and let her drop me off in Portland with no car and no money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye, Ma. Shit. <laughs> but you made it, right? Yeah. You're thriving now. You got furniture. So we were talking about the orb, and I got lost. Uh, what were we doing? We were doing a round robin here. Something like that. <laughs> this is a fucking I don't know disaster. Anymore. I'm still wondering about the little fluffy clouds. So I don't know. Oh, the orb album. That's such a good album from the nineties. <laughs> Go on. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it? <laughs> this is a fucking disaster. You want me to start singing? <laughs> Love <Loving> you. <laughs> the next note was talk about Marie Calendar Pie. I'm still not sure. Does anybody know, I know. about I this meme trend? It's just a woman that burnt a pie and then blamed Marie Calendar for it. Yeah. How is that's that the it biggest? Is. It's bigger than the orb. People are nuts about this pie. It comes around every few years. There's groups with like 50,000 people, and it's all soccer moms reposting the same shit. My wife's in the groups. <laughs> so this yeah. is not a good meme trend. That's why it doesn't hit our groups, is what you're saying. It's super normie. Right. Basically. It's it's way too normie. You gotta, you, but you can jump in that group. Somebody's, I mean, like, there's, there's really normie memes caying in that group all over the place. Join the group and... Drop a Marie Calendar meme and go get a K. I'm just trying to get some growth on my page, and that seems impossible. Uh, maybe I should uh, make some pie memes. So, Dustin, you said this is this comes back around. This isn't even a new thing. Yeah, no, I've seen that. It, it, I saw this last year, the year before. It's been around for a few years. It's not new. It comes around like Thanksgiving every <laughs> year. Jesus <laughs> Christ! What did I just? I'm deleting that. It's already, you know what? I'm going to leave it in. I never, not, here's a fact about the podcast. If I say with my mouth that I'm deleting something, it's going to get added in like three more times. So we're going to talk about this pod for like the next five episodes. I'm deleting that. Well, that totally renders my last topic null and void. I was going to say, uniting the world through memes by them being an escape from life and letting us all laugh at something universal. How do you guys feel about my writing? Marie <laughs> Calendar. I'm deleting that. I don't get it. Who, Casey? That was a bad topic. <laughs> Where's Simon? Yeah. Oh, he's uh, he's over in the next room. I'll go grab him. Go get him. This thing's dead in the water. Go get Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, pie memes haven't made it to the UK. Totally unfamiliar with pie memes. The orb memes have made it over here, but no, not, uh, not pie. I have no more topics written, so you guys, we're, we're, we're in uncharted water now. This is just... Uh, I forgot you were the guy with the puppet. <laughs> this is the guy with the puppet. Yeah. I was like, who's Simon? <laughs> Simon, this is Simon. Simon says. Oh, God. I love how he doesn't change his voice at all. Hey, um, Simon, what's our next topic? Simon has been promoted to co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Slappers only! Slappers only! Um, Deke, have you ever played Goldeneye for N64? <laughs> um, like a very, very long time ago. I didn't have an N64 myself. I've 
I, I played it briefly. I've, I've heard from previous podcasts that it's it's big. It's big in your lore. No, I'm, I'm more of a more of a place. <laughs> it is our lore. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty dumb one, but I really enjoy it. I I think that the Skyler storyline may be the most important one in the entire podcast, and the fact that he's not here, I I'm the one that's adrift. You know, earlier I asked if uh, Chance was feeling a bit adrift without Eugene, but truth is I, I'm a little lost without Skyler. He's at work right now. He's probably huffing some thermal paste. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what? Let's just let's just have a let's just have a shout out for Eugene too, because he's at work sanding some lady's trim and trying to oh, man. finish it and you know, he's out, he's out there huffing the paints, too, so, you know. And it's and, time for the nightly Miguel shout-out. Yeah! <laughs> nice segue right into there. What up, yeah, Miguel? Forget- what up? And- Is he there? Have we mentioned Casey yet this episode? Fuck Casey. Nope. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Oh! <laughs> Everybody hates Casey, especially Dustin. This just in. <laughs> Shit. Nah, nah, he's a good dude. Simon says. Man, he's a good looking dude. I don't like that Simon's just staring into my soul right now. Simon, <laughs> what's our next topic? <laughs> oh, How does Simon um, feel about McRibs? I had some for this too. Oh, he's a fake McRibs. He can't drink and talk at the same time. I've run out. I'm out. I, we're 40 minutes deep. If anyone's got anything else. Oh, we're 40, 40 minutes. How, how do y'all yeah. feel about toasters? There's probably five minutes that's going to get chopped out of this, so. So we're running a little long here? Oh, this is a disaster. Where is Skyler? I think he's working, dude. All right, well, let's let's call him at the cock factory. Some Does he, he manufactures cock? Cock tubes. <laughs> cock sleeves. You don't even know what your co-host does? <laughs> no, I know. I just oh. said it. He prints the tubing. He prints the tubing for the cock. Yes. That's what I just said. You know I'm the one that edits. I edit this, too. I'm going to edit you. <laughs> Are you doing some sort of live stream, too, Chance? You, you have to... You, right now, you have to tell us the truth. Some sort... What do you mean? No. <laughs> With a, a live stream in addition to the podcast? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm, sus, I'm suspect. You had it last episode... Uh, that Chance was on, he was also running a Q&A for Eugene. Ah, and, yep, I was. Simon and I was. feel like I read something today that you may also be doing another side thing. There's a, there's a, there's a, you're doing something else. I never heard that. Uh, you said it! <laughs> when? I don't know. I have nothing to um, back this up with. This is crazy. Where's the Rig Iverson puppet? Show us Rig Iverson. <laughs> that looks like Duck Hunt to me. That's all I got, buddy. Oh, he's, he's down now. He fell over. Duck down. All right, boys. Well, this is a fucking disaster. Thanks, y'all, for coming on. I'm going to end it right here. <laughs> Nobody, don't disconnect until he saves your shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that a deal? I actually haven't stopped recording. Quick, disconnect, okay, disconnect now. <laughs> Josh, what are you eating? Chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. Well, Deke, thanks for coming on to this shit show. I uh, appreciate you being here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, no worries. You might gain one or two followers from coming on here, and we might lose followers so, from <laughs> our <laughs> performance. This is a fucking disaster. That's all I got to say. Say actually, we're uh, we're running kind of long here. Kind of long here. Uh, we're running kind of long here. Oh fuck you! That's not what I said.